I did not plan properly. You know, I was, this is why I want to help you guys, right? Because when I was going on deployment, when I was packing my stuff and getting everything ready, I was like, I don't know what I'm bringing. Just got the motherfucking Popeyes, five piece with the case, just walking in the mashed potatoes. Oh, shit. shit. Mm. Uh. Hey, too. Welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a very long time. And if you can guess by the subject of this video from the title, then you'll understand why. I just got back from a eight, nine month deployment. Um, with that being said, I have a list of things that I found helpful um, for my first deployment and I wanted to share with you guys. So when you go on your first deployment, you're not like, oh my God, I don't know what to bring, that kind of stuff. So that being said, if this is something you're interested in, stay tuned because I got 10 tips and tricks to help you get through your first deployment. So the first tip I have, bring extra hygiene products. I'm gonna put a list up um, on whatever side and um, yeah, bring extra of those things. I say that because um, number one, you may get extended, that's number one, but even before then, I'm not saying like bring like six months worth of hygiene products because that's number one unrealistic. You won't be able to fit all that in your bag and uh, you won't be able to fit all that in your rack or your locker with all your other items. So um, I will say at least bring a month or two extra of hygiene products just so that um, you're not running out and you're like stuck smelling funky because you don't have the hygiene products that you would like to use. Um, most ships, I was on a carrier, so most ships do have a ship store. I'm not sure about smaller ships, but most carriers have ship stores that do sell hygiene products. However, they're not, um, they're not fancy. They're not great. If you're that type of person that likes to use specific hygiene products, I would recommend bringing at least one or two uh, months extra worth so that way you have some and you don't have to worry about running out right away. The next thing that I have on the list is socks and underwear. So I know when I first was going out, someone was like, oh, I'm gonna bring like 20 something pairs of socks and like 30 something pair of underwear. And I was like, you're out of your mind. Like, why would you bring all that? We have a laundry room, you can just wash your clothes. So the problem with that, problems with that, number one, laundry is not always open. So uh, if you are running low or are about to run out, it may bring up issues um, where if you only bring like 10 or 12 pair of socks and underwear, uh, you may be like, you know, kind of kind of close when laundry finally does open or laundry finally does work. So bring extra socks and underwear. Number two, uh, the ship store that I mentioned earlier does sell socks and underwear. However, they don't always have it or yeah, so they don't always have it or they just maybe not have your size or um, maybe just not the type that you wear, whatever reason. The moral is, the more you bring, the less you have to worry about. Um, I have a couple friends that whenever we went out to port, they would always buy, at a minimum, one pack of socks and one pack of underwear, so that way they would accumulate socks and underwear over time. Now, if that's something you wanna do too, that's fine. If you don't have enough space in your sea bag right away to bring extra socks and underwear, that's always an option. On the downside of that, port calls are not always guaranteed, so I wouldn't wanna rely on that to um, have to make sure I get you know extra socks and underwear. Um, ladies bras too, obviously, but um, yeah, so bring extra undergarments, just save yourself the hassle, um, and yeah, you'll be straight. Tip number three, take advantage of your free time. What do I mean by free time? On deployment, you work seven days a week. You have 12 hours on, 12 hours off. That's how it is for most jobs. Um, you may have like that lucky job where you only have to work like a couple hours a day and you get the rest of the time off. However, normal jobs in the Navy, you work 12 hours on, 12 hours off every day until port calls or until deployment is over. Every now and then they will throw in a no-fly day. Um, and if you're an aviation rate, no-fly day means usually for fixed wing aircraft, you're not flying. Um, sorry if you're helos, my squadron always, nine times out of 10 we were flying on no-fly days. But the days we weren't flying, I took advantage of it. Um, get sleep, go to the gym, um, call your loved ones, get on get on a computer and email your family. Um, maybe just take time for yourself. Whatever you wanna do, 
just take advantage of the fact that you had that day off because they are very, very, very limited. So when you do get them, take full advantage of it. Tip number four, get off the ship. So when I say that, I don't mean jump overboard. Don't do that. But when you have port calls, it is important that you get off of the boat. Yes, uh, you're probably like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to save up my money. Okay, that's fine. Um, I know plenty of people that went out and only spent maybe $50 just to get food and have drinks with some friends. That's okay. Or they have options where you can go on tours and you can go out and explore the city. Because if you think about it, you've been on a boat for, normally you're on a boat for like 30 plus days before you get off to visit a country or a port, whatever. So being on the boat for that amount of time and you finally have the chance to go out and explore not only do you have the chance to get off the boat you're getting off the boat to go to a different country that you've never been to before unless you have been there before but it's your first deployment if you if it wasn't your first deployment you wouldn't be watching this video but it is your first deployment so with that being said get off the ship take advantage of the fact that you are in a new area and go out and see the world because for most people that's why they joined the navy they wanted to travel so it doesn't make sense to go on deployment and then stay on the boat because that defeats the purpose of traveling yeah you could say oh i went to this country but did you really go there if you never got off the ship tip number five care packages they will save your life um a friend of mine i went to boot camp went and sent me a care package which i was extremely thankful for um this was after the first time we got extended and at the time, the ship store didn't have any food. Uh, the galley was running out of food. I don't mean to say all of this just so um, I'm scaring people that are going on deployment for the first time, but I do want you to be aware of situations that might occur when you do go on deployment. The ship store is not going to have any food all the time. The vending machines aren't going to have any food, and uh, the galley is definitely not going to have a lot of food. And if they do have food, one, it's not going to be the best option. It's not going to be what you're used to or two, they just don't have enough to give you a decent sized portions to where you're uh, satiated. So care packages, I would recommend uh, either setting up some type of system online to ship out to the boat, maybe like once a month or once every two months or however long with enough items to keep you, um, to keep you comfortable, I'll say that. Um, it doesn't have to just be food, it can be, uh, it can be clothes like I mentioned earlier. It could be hygiene products like I mentioned earlier. It could be um, snacks obviously will get you through deployment. Or it can be uh, books or whatever. It could be anything. Um, just set up something. Have your family, your loved ones, whoever, a friend, send you a care package, at least one, just to get you through. The box I got was enough to get me through a month or two. So just keep that in mind. Care packages are crucial um for the boat they do give you a shipping address that i would try to get uh, at least a couple weeks before you go on deployment um so you can send it to your family or loved ones or friends or whatever keep in mind though um receiving mail on the boat takes about maybe a month so um even if you do order something while you're on the ship yes that is also possible expect that if you do have a package sent to you it's probably going to take about a month to get there minimum number six six right baby wipes you know like wouldn't that go into hygiene products yes it probably does go into hygiene products but if you're not someone that uses baby wipes on a consistent purpose reason scope whatever if you're not someone that uses baby wipes on a daily basis right i'm going to tell you why you should bring baby wipes on the boat even if it's not just to like clean yourself after you relieve yourself right so the main reason for baby wipes, right? There will not always be water. And you're like, why? I thought the same thing. You will not have always have access to take a, um, a normal shower. At some cases, you might even have to take a boot camp shower where you're in and out in under five, 10 minutes because that's the time allotted for a shower of water or running water period there will be times where the ship does not have enough water to produce to allow people to take a shower or to, to use the bathroom or drink water. It's happened. I've been through it a couple of times. I promise you will survive. With that being said, 
keep in mind your water usage. If you are on a ship and you are just walking through and you see like a water fountain going, turn it off if nobody's using it. Just do running water for no reason. Um, showers, they say like don't take, uh, what's the word, Hollywood showers, I think that's what they called it. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, my showers usually were like 20, 30 minutes. I'm not gonna tell you to take less than that, do whatever makes you feel comfortable, but don't be in for an hour because at the end of the day, or really towards the end of deployment, you're only gonna be hurting yourself because that's when water hours kick in. Our water hours were the first 15 minutes of every hour. It's the only time water was available. You also wanna take into account your birthing area, right? So if you're in a birthing with a bunch of people, men or women, right? They don't have co-ed birthings, but either a male birthing or a female birthing, you have a crap to other people. You have to share the same bathroom or head with those people, right? So let's say day check gets off and everybody's going to take a shower, but you only have the first 15 minutes of every hour. Now imagine standing in line, 30, 40, 50 people, however many people, and you're waiting to take a shower, but you only have 15 minutes to get through everybody. You get what I'm saying? So it benefits it benefits you to uh, just save yourself in the beginning, right? Now, I know this is an ideal conversation because not everyone is gonna apply this rule. However, uh, this is for you, right? So however many people watch this video and they hear this tip, just keep this in mind. Sometimes it's what you do that may or may not make the difference, right? So just focus on yourself. Don't worry about whatever everybody else is doing. With that being said, baby wipes will save you, I promise. Tip number seven, I don't know what number one, but this one, this one to me is by far one of the most important ones. So sleeping arrangements. I'm gonna insert a picture of what the barrack, not the barracks, gosh, the birthing looks like, right? Just so you have an idea of how this is set. Um, the beds, the beds are not comfortable. Um, they are a little worse than, uh, boot camp or a school or the barracks i don't know how far you're coming from watching this video but they're worse than all of that right no offense about people i don't know how you deal with it but you know the, this is probably how you deal with it i know you're probably like, just get to the tip already sleeping bags mattress toppers put them together or don't either way they will help you get the best sleep ever so my first half of deployment i didn't have a sleeping bag or mattress top someone was leaving they left the mattress topper I took it it saved me honestly ever since I put the mattress topper on my bed it literally helped me sleep so much better like it, 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 I don't want it to seem like I stole it because I didn't steal it they were like leaving at the end of the day they left the mattress topper and it was either gonna get thrown out or I was gonna be you know the helping hand the neighborhood spider-man and take it for myself and use it put it to good use before you go on, on deployment instead of having to wait half of the deployment to maybe possibly find a mattress topper just buy one before you get there i've heard the combination together makes for immaculate sleep and sleep is important when you're working 12 on 12 off every day so just save yourself the heartache either buy a sleeping bag or a mattress topper or buy both tip number eight i think we're on number eight civvies civilian attire um again everything i'm telling you is from my personal experience now you may not all be like me however um i will tell you now what someone told me do not bring an extraordinary amount of civilian attire because you will buy clothes when you go to port you're only going to wear your civilian attire when you're out in port if you bring just enough to get through maybe a day or two uh three days tops because if you're in port for four days you're gonna have duty one of those days so two three days worth of clothes that's fine right and then who cares if you wear the same clothes to a different port because they've never seen you before in that country the only people who you would be trying to impress at that point would be people on the ship if that's what you want to do so with that being said two three outfits that's it now if you do want to rewear those clothes for a different port calls that's fine or if you're like me and just buy a ridiculous amount of clothes every time you hit port, that's me. I spent so much money on clothes, um, then that's an option too. And that's even more reason why you should not bring a ridiculous amount of clothes onto the boat because whatever you have on the boat, you're taking it off with you, right? So let's say you come in with two, two sea bags, right? Two sea bags, 
a duffel bag, and a book bag. I'm telling you this, it probably sounds like a lot, but trust me, it's not a lot. So let's say you have all of those bags, right? And then on top of that, each port call, you accumulate more clothes, right? So what's gonna happen is one, you're not gonna have any space to put all of the new stuff into your bags to get home. The solution to that would be to grab a box and mail your things home before you uh, return to home port. That would be smart. Or you can just save yourself the trouble and the money and just don't bring that many clothes. If you're like me and you know you like to shop because I have a serious shopping problem, just don't bring a lot of clothes. It, I promise you, it saves you so much work. Coming home, I sent maybe three boxes home. So full of clothes. So just save yourself the heartache. Also, you kind of want to plan accordingly. So if you can kind of get an idea of what type of region you're going to be in, what type of year, so you know what season to prepare for. Um, I was under the impression that we were going to go into a warmer climate, so I didn't bring any winter clothes, which kind of bit me in the butt because the first port call we hit was freezing cold and I had no winter clothes at all. Actually, the first two or three that we hit were freezing cold. So I had to accumulate more clothes. Another reason why you should not, you should not bring a ridiculous amount of clothes. I think I actually just gave you the one and two reasons why you shouldn't bring a lot of clothes. But the point is, just don't bring a lot of civvies. Just don't do it. Save yourself the heartache. Don't do it. It doesn't matter if you're like, oh, I want to get all cute and dressed up and wear my new whatever so I can show people how I dress and my style. I promise you, it don't, it don't matter. It don't matter because I guarantee you are probably going to buy some clothes when you get the port. If that's the type of person you are, you're going to buy clothes because all these other countries have stuff that we do not have here in the United States. You're, everyone's gonna do it. Everyone's gonna do it. The only person that may or may not do it would be the person that's trying to save money. Also me, still spent a lot of money. Still came back with a lot of money. So, do you boo boo. Tip number nine, bring a hobby. You're probably thinking, what the heck does that mean? So, if you like reading, bring books. Don't bring books in excessive, but bring a couple books. Um, because again, everything I'm telling you, I've done. I'm a serious reader. I love reading books. I actually just went to Barnes and Nobles and bought five books. I love books. I only read one book on deployment. I brought maybe seven. I, one, I didn't really have time to read. And uh, two, I didn't really have time to read. So um, you can bring a few books. I would say maybe three. Or if you go through all of those books, this is when those care packages kick in. Hey, would you mind sending me a book or two, right? Okay, problem solved. Now, if you're not a book reader and you have other hobbies, um, you can bring your games. If you are a gamer, you can bring um, your Xbox or your PlayStation or your Switch or whatever. Um, most shops do have a TV that they hook up. In, in the shop right so it's like a community TV but you can hook up your game console or whatever to that TV and if that's how you want to pass your time by all means do it uh, if that's what makes you happy if that's what you want to do in your free time bring it um, if you are a gym person if you are a fitness person make sure you bring enough stuff um, to to get you throughout deployment. I'm not saying bring like six, seven months worth of protein. One is unrealistic, no matter how you package it, because I've seen people do like, um, dump the, the jar into like plastic Ziploc bags and go off that, don't do that, right? Just, just don't do that. Um, again, the care packages, hey, would you mind sending me some more protein? I'm out. Or um, whenever you are able to go online and order stuff, maybe you could send yourself some protein. I've done that too. You want to make sure that you bring your accessories. So you want to make sure you bring your lifting belt, your your knee your knee braces, your uh your wrist wraps, or whatever you use. Right? Not just supplements, but whatever other accessories that you use. You don't want to just bring um just bring your work clothes or your civvies or your hygiene or socks, or underwear, or whatever. You don't want to just bring that stuff. You want to bring something that'll keep you mentally sane. Right? Um, and whatever your hobby is, just, I would say, just bring it along with you. Not in excess, but just bring something so that you can stay grounded, right? Um, for those of you that just be like, oh, I don't really do any of those things, but I love to listen to music, right? So, um, 
there's an app called VLC, right? VLC is something you put on your phone. It allows other people with VLC to send you music or movies or um, whatever, you know, music, movies. I'm pretty sure that's, that's it. Um, get that app, right? Because when you're on the boat, your music only lasts for 30 days, right? And like I said before, port calls are not always guaranteed or sometimes that they won't happen every 30 days. So what you're gonna wanna do is if you get the app right, you can have music stored on your phone that will never run out, number one, will never run out. And um, number two, if you want new music, then other people can send that to you. In addition to that, right, there are times when phones are not authorized to be on. So what I've seen a few people do is they would have MP3 players or iPods or whatever, and they would have like the old school connector headphones or whatever just to get them through. That's another option that um, you want to bring something that you know you can always use no matter what. Movies. Movies are also a thing. Um, you can, most people, they will just airdrop you a movie if you have an iPhone or if they have a hard drive, you can get it on your phone that way. Um, I'm not too sure about how Android people do it. I have an iPhone, but I know for me, BLC and airdrop were how I got um, movies and shows or whatever, I didn't have anything to do or I just wanted to watch a movie, so keep that in mind also. But moral of the story, this tip is whatever your hobby is, right? Just because you're on deployment and you're on the boat doesn't mean that you have to stop doing everything that makes you you, right? You can bring something with you so that you can keep that going. Last tip that I have is make the most of it, right? So this is your first deployment and if you're doing more than one contract even if you're only doing one contract you're probably going to have another one right but you might not okay you might be like hey this just ain't for me i'm doing my one and i'm getting out right and then that just might be your one deployment make the most of it because how often do you get to be in a career or in a job or whatever that allows you to visit other countries without you having to pay for it if anything they pay you to go to another country which i think is pretty cool um, and you just meet a whole bunch of new people, people that you wouldn't meet on a regular basis. So yeah, there's going to be ups and downs just like there is back home, but you know, out to sea, it's just, there's only but so many people in so many places that you can go or see, you know? So you just want to make the most of it. I had, I'm not going to say I had the best time, but I didn't have the worst time either. I definitely made it through. Um, definitely changed me mentally um i think it deployment will change you it could be a good change it could be a bad change i've heard stories of people coming back from deployment and they just um it's hard to readjust back to civilian life right so um when you're out there just make the most of it because it's it's a rare opportunity you know for your first time just go out and some of you may be young, you know, you might be fresh out of high school and that's like a really great experience. How many other high schoolers can be like, oh, I just went to Croatia or I just went to Japan or, you know, just for just for a couple of days. But hey, you still went there, you know, so that is all I got. Um, I'm pretty sure I covered the essentials. But if you have any questions, uh, comments or concerns, right you can leave a comment down below and i will get back to you as soon as i can or if you have any other um, video ideas that you would like to see me talk about regardless if it's deployment based or just navy based leave a comment down below and i can make a video on whatever you want to see but i hope this video was helpful thank you guys for watching it thank you for coming back to my channel if you have been here before or if it's your first time thank you for thank just thank you for watching um but yeah so that's all i got I will be coming back with more videos, not all deployment based, but probably mostly Navy based. Um, maybe some a day in my life just so you can see what it's like to be in the military, at least the Navy side, right? Um, and yeah, that's all I got. And thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. I like to keep it humble, but sometimes I like to flex, keeping eyes on all of my chest.